welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. One of the tools that I've had in my shop for a couple of months now, but I've held off on making a video is a desktop CNC router. Now, the reason I held off on this is because one, I had a whole bunch of projects going on, but two, I wanted to go through and have some time using it so I could really kind of get a feel for it prior to unboxing it for you. Cause though I'm an engineer by day, there are certain things about a CNC router that I really just needed to give myself time to feel out. So in this video, I want to talk about what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what use it has in my shop and why I have an ultra high tech piece of equipment in my shop compared to most of the other basic power tools and hand tools that I have for woodworking. All right, let's get going. So the first question that I wanted to answer is why I got a desktop CNC router. There's all manner of CNC routers that you can get for your wood shop from ones that can do an entire panel, a four foot by eight foot panel, all the way down to basically this size. And I think you can go even smaller than this. I've got something like a one foot by one foot area that I can do carving and laser engraving in. But the reason why I got this for my shop was primarily for customization. Now the customization that you can get out of a CNC is really cool because on any of the things you make by hand, if you want to put a name, if you want to put a logo, if you want to put um, any number of things on it, it's all digital. So it comes in as a digital file and it turns into a physical product, something that would take a lot more time, effort and work and realistically skill to do if I was going to try and do this by hand. The second reason that I got this was so that I could trial whether or not I wanted to get a larger CNC for my shop. The manner in which I used this smaller one was informing me on how much I would end up using a larger CNC. Now, what I've learned up until this point is that I probably don't need to get a larger CNC because realistically, the amount of customization that I do is pretty small. Now, the one added benefit you can get out of a larger CNC is uh, functional parts and making functional parts that you may not be able to do with this smaller CNC because it just takes too long, it's too underpowered, etc., etc. So that is the one piece that I am missing on my CNC. And I'm just a hobbyist. So if I was doing this for a business, I'm sure I could find a myriad of places that I could put this in application, both for customization and for making functional parts. But as a hobbyist, I'm not really finding the use that I need to get a larger CNC. Who knows, maybe I'll change my mind. But up until this point, I think this little desktop one is gonna work beautifully for me. So the next thing that I wanted to do, if you're looking to get one of these for your shop, is talk about how much it cost. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and flash up all the different components that I ended up getting for this so that you guys can see the sum total of where it sat. Now, one of the things that I will say about this is that this is not the most money that I've spent on my shop, but it's certainly not a buy on a whim kind of a thing. Um, so if you're looking to get one, just understand that there's a lot of different customizations you can make that can add or subtract costs depending on what you're looking for for your shop. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is probably the most intimidating part of a CNC is how complicated is it? And I'm going to break this up into two different categories. You've got how complicated is setup and how complicated is operating it. Now I would say I like full disclaimer, I do have an engineering background. And so there's some amount of technical expertise that I just got and I'm just naturally inclined to because <clears throat> that's the type of person that I am. However, I will say that setup was moderately technical. There wasn't any electronics that I really had to do outside of just making sure that I'm plugging things into the right place. But if you're moderately technically savvy, you're going to be just fine. The directions were great. There's a couple of really great videos, especially for the one that I got. It's the Genmitsu uh, Sane Smart CNC router. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description. But there's this guy that puts together really, really great guides. I'll go ahead and link them down in the description or pop them up on screen. I'll make sure that you guys have access to it. If you're going to get one of these, he by far has one of the best sets of directions for putting this thing together. In fact, it was so good that Genmitsu actually took a whole bunch of screen caps from his YouTube video and put it into their directions manual because he does such a good job showing all the different parts. So that was for setup. I really want to talk a little bit about operation as well. Operating it is not that complicated, but there is some knowledge that you need to have, some basic knowledge that you need to have, which includes uh, what are speeds and feeds? What what, did that, what does speeds and feeds even mean when it comes to a CNC router? Uh, what kind of laser power do I want to have? What accelerations do I want to have? And a lot of this comes in the setup where you'll kind of set it up and then you never need to touch it again or once you do a little bit of work, you understand what speeds and feeds work well for your materials and your tool. Um, however, you're gonna need to have a kind of a basic understanding of what these things are prior to running your CNC 
privacy. It's not really that difficult. There's a lot of good online resources, but I would put it again in the moderate category where you don't need to be an expert, but you do need to have a little bit of technical um, intuition when it comes to putting these things together to understand what you need to do, which I would say for most woodworkers, you have enough technical expertise to kind of get what's going on there. Okay, next up I wanted to talk about software. What software do you wanna be using for this? Now, I have two different software suites that I use depending on whether or not I am doing laser engraving or whether or not I am doing CNC laser engraving. So for laser engraving, which is actually what I use for this almost all the time, I use a software called Lightburn. Now, the cool thing about Lightburn is that you can move your platform around, you can do whatever you need to, you can import uh, images just right off the top, adjust your settings, get the laser engraving done, all of the coasters that I've done, I've done a couple of little tiny custom signs or little tiny custom logoed things. Um, all of that was done basically just by importing an image, sizing it to the right size, and then running with it. I have a couple of tricks that I've run through to get alignment a lot more easy because one of the things you'll run into, when you have something in, in the digital world and you need to translate to where that is in the physical world, there's a little bit of magic that goes into making sure that where I'm actually going to have my laser or my spindle for routering, uh, where does that sit with respect to the digital world? And so there's a little bit of magic there, but I can talk about that a little bit more in general. For routering, I like to use Fusion 360. That's also where I happen to do all of my design work for my different projects. And so it was kind of a natural extension. Really easy to go through, really easy to get to the module. But again, in this area, there's a, a moderate amount of technical expertise needed to get it your uh, paths correct for the CNC and make sure that you're using the right tool so that Fusion 360 knows what you're gonna be using on the CNC router so that it's using the right uh, speeds, rotations, etc. because there's a lot of defaults that go into it that you end up needing to override before you get started. So not hard, moderately difficult, um, but again, if you've got a little bit of technical expertise, you'll be just fine. So Lightburn, Fusion 360. Alrighty, and then last up with this overview, I really wanted to talk about whether or not I recommend getting a CNC router for your shop. And I really honestly think that depends on what you're doing in your shop. If you find yourself doing a lot of customizations or you wanna be able to do customizations having a little CNC laser engraver or router is really, really cool. And it opens up a ton of opportunities to customize things that, I mean, A, from a practical sense, you can charge more for because it's customized, but B, um, it just makes it so much more homey and personalized for an individual person rather than a normal just woodworked product. And it really depends on who your customers are and what they need or what you wanna be able to do. And whether or not you wanna learn some of these new skills to do the laser engraving or to do the CNC router, it all just depends on what you wanna have and what skills you wanna have in your shop. I will say that in the setup and operation, just like I mentioned earlier, there is a moderate amount of technical expertise required in understanding how the technology works, how the electronics work, how the software works, and kind of how everything's communicating with each other to make sure that what you want turns out into what you want on your actual uh, piece of wood that you've woodworked. So again, it totally depends on what you want in your shop and where you are. I think it's a pretty good fit for me. I don't have a massive amount of throughput that I have on it, but that was also why I decided to buy this smaller version rather than a much larger version first, because I would rather spend five or $600 or somewhere in that range on this guy right here, depending on the features and accessories, rather than the two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 on a much larger CNC if it's just gonna sit in my shop collecting dust. And for me, I think I've learned the laser engraving is what I use most often because it's really good, it's really quick, it's really easy for just customizing things, um, where the CNC router on this guy is really pretty underpowered when it comes to making large customizations. And so the amount of time it takes to get things done is pretty substantial. And so if I was gonna go with CNC router customizations, I would probably end up upgrading. But again, I haven't really seen a need for that in my shop. So anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful. I know that was a whole lot of talking and kind of seeing what was going on with it. But if you guys are looking for a CNC router for your shop, I hope that this provided you with all of the information you need to make an informed decision whether or not you want a CNC router for your shop. So thank you guys again for joining. I really appreciate it. Happy woodworking. Bye.